So hey Bubble family, welcome back to the channel. Um, so in today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about Megxit. Um, just going to give a little bit about what I think happened prior to Megxit, a little bit of their sort of their relationship and what I think happened with Megxit. I know that a lot of you have spoken about the children and I am going to be doing this video. I've just got to find a way to do this in a way YouTube doesn't flag it and um, I get in trouble. So I have to do it in code somehow. Um, but I will be doing it and I'm going to attempt to do it this week. So just bear with me. Um, yeah. So if you don't know what to do by now, you should. But grab your drink of choice, whether it be tea, whether it be coffee. And today I am drinking a, what is it? A caramel latte from my Nespresso. And no, I, I, I'm not, I haven't got shares in it or it's not a promotion. I just bought this Nespresso machine because I, I, I just got sucked into it. Can I just say TikTok made me buy it? Um, and I have to say it hasn't disappointed. Um, the coffee is really nice. There are some that's a bit, mm, but some of it is actually really nice. And it's just quick and um, yeah. So anyway, I am drinking one of my caramel ones and they're very nice. Um so yeah, so whether you are still in the middle of your dry January and, you know, you might be breaking that come tomorrow um, or you might be carrying it on and or you're being healthy and just continuing drinking your water, which I will add, I do have here too. Um, so I've got a balance. Um, so or you might want to add a little bit of something, something, because as my flag says behind me, it's five o'clock somewhere. So let's grab that drink and dive right in. Before we get started, I just want to clarify that I am a qualified therapist and a trained life coach. Um, in these videos, I give you my professional perspective because over the years, the many years I've been doing this, um, I have learnt to read body language. You read between the lines as well. A lot of the time with clients or what I see on the television, it's not about what they say. But sometimes it's what they don't say. Um, and you also, like I say, you can read between the lines of, of the things that they, they will talk about. Um, and you can come, you can get quite a lot out of people from, from that. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you my professional perspective, but I also give you my personal perspective. And sometimes that doesn't always align with my professional. Um, so yeah, so like I say, this isn't therapy. These people are not my clients. So I am free to talk about what I choose on my own channel. So let's clarify that and get that out there. Um, so yeah, so Megxit. I haven't really spoken about Megxit um, purely and simply because there's been so many videos on it, but I have had a lot of people that have emailed me or a lot of people that have asked me to talk about my thoughts a, on their engagement video and B, on what my thoughts are around Megxit. So let's just go to the engagement video first. This was the first time um, my interest got peaked. I wasn't really that interested before. Um, yes, of course, I'd, I'd known that they were sort of together. But when I saw the engagement interview, that was when I first thought, they're lying and that that was kind of like okay and I, and you know what even though i'm not saying that i wasn't aware to the fact that the royal family can can lie or that there's not dishonesty um you know that there's dishonesty in everywhere but i think i suppose i was like a lot of people i put the royal family a bit on a pedestal and per perhaps didn't kind of want to admit that there was that something could go on behind the scenes um, and this was the first time I think I thought they they're lying and OK, why are they lying? Something is definitely not right here. And a lot of that was, um, you know, if you study their face, I mean, I know a lot of you have done that by now, but if you study their face, study their body language, study the way they the, the things that they say, um, the phrasing that's used, you can really see that 
the you know there's a lot of times almost like harry's looking harry's looking at megan for approval she's looking at him for approval now that, that's not a case of saying that's lying but when you have more than one or two things in in something then you're kind of like okay something's not right here you know there's some things that he says and there's an there's an element where he says he didn't know who she was now bearing in mind now this has changed and he somehow saw her on it and come on now this is harry who is <laughs> um the prince of the royal family a prince of the royal family an eligible bachelor they want us to believe that he was just scrolling through Instagram. And this was after, obviously afterwards. And he just happened upon her picture with a silly um, dog face filter. And he was somehow bowled over by her. Um, I'm sorry I call BS on that. I do not believe that for one second. What I believe that is, is that is a, let's change the narrative of when Harry said, I didn't even know who she was. So this was definitely a, she didn't like that. And you could tell that when he said that her jaw clenches a bit and she's not happy with that. And that's why I also think that she then threw in the, I didn't know who he was. I think this was a passive aggressive dig at him because he said, I didn't even know who she was. I'd never watched Suits. And yet the narrative again changes to later on where it's, oh, William and Catherine were huge fans of Suits and they were so bowled over by Meghan. Um, they were starstruck. She's not even the main character in this cable TV series. Um, and they've met and, in, and Catherine has walked up the steps holding the hand of Tom Cruise. Now, whether or not you're a fan of Tom Cruise or not, I would say he's far more um, celebrity than Meghan Markle. So this this was her. This was all her. She did not like the fact that Harry had said, didn't know who she was, never watched Suits. And I would say there was that's he's telling the truth there. Um, so I do believe this was a blind date that was set up for him. She, however, no, it wasn't. And I think this is when she was starting to do her planning and she was planning this from a long time ago. So she orchestrated this and she managed to, uh, I think she got her friend, was it uh, probably Marcus Anderson and is it Nisha Nunu at the time? She got them to orchestrate this setup. Um, and so this is what I did genuinely think happened. I genuinely think that he was telling the truth there. I don't believe for one second they met on Instagram. I think that was her saying to him, I'm not happy with what you said there. You need to make it seem like I'm a lot more famous and the royals were so into me. And so she's got him to change, rewrite history, basically. Um, but the unfortunate thing is that unfor that just makes Harry look stupid because in a way now this makes it look like he lied. Um, so it's like, which is it? You met as a blind date and didn't know who she was or you saw her and, and no offence. And I mean, I don't think that she's unattractive, but there are far more eligible people out there that are far more attractive and nicer. Let's be fair. I don't, you know, and you can't even on a filter, you don't really see who somebody is. I don't think for one second he was scrolling through Instagram going, oh, my gosh, wow, this woman who's got this crazy dog filter on. She's just so amazing. No. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so anyway, so then, of course, yes. So we have this engagement interview. And then, you know, the, the lead up to this, um, we know that she's I, I don't think Harry was very serious about her. But we also know that she's obviously somehow ensnared him. Now, the rumours are that there was possibly a fake pregnancy. Is this something that she would do? Absolutely. Yes 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 like i said in my last video a narcissist personality disorder type cluster b personality will do whatever it takes and if you think that the just the normal garden variety cluster b personality who's not famous or not in the public eye can kind of get away with a few things um but this is someone who's got influence, who's got a bit of power behind her, that's got some money behind her. So this is somebody that has set this up. 
And so if you think for one second that she's not capable of pretending to be pregnant, possibly faking a something after saying this, you are very much mistaken because she absolutely would and she would go all out. And what was interesting to me is I watched something um, and I can't for the life of me, but it was it was a film and the woman she needed to she was she was faking a pregnancy and then she needed to fake um, a miss. Uh, I'm not trying to trigger anybody here. Um, I do appreciate that this does happen in, in in real life and, you know, and it is awful. However, this is just what I believe. Um, and so she would have needed to do, so she needed to do this. And so she bought a tub, which apparently in the States you can buy quite easily of pig's blood. And so what she did there, because it is, is the, the most uh, nearest thing to the, the composition of human blood, um, that's why they use it in a lot of they use it in some films and things like that. So so she would have known about this. So don't think for one second that this woman would not have done something along those lines to create the illusion of this happening. Um, and I'm fortunate. I don't think Harry is clued up enough to think, wow, you know, let's get the let's get a rush to the hospital because all all it would have been was potentially she would have said to Harry, no, it's OK. I don't want to go to hospital. Um, I'll sort this out myself. I don't want the I don't want the media to find out. I don't want any of that. And Harry would have gone along with that. Harry would have gone along with that. So don't think for a second that this woman is not capable of something like this because she absolutely is. Um, and this and I, and I know that sounds awful, but working, I, I trust me, I understand. And I know a lot of you do as well. The, the things that narcissistic personality types will do to get what they want are they will commit criminal acts to get what they want. They will they will blame somebody for a criminal act and get them put in prison. They won't care. Trust me on that. They, you know, the, we are going into the realms of yes, they are sociopaths and psychopaths. A lot of them. Um, so this could potentially be something that could have been done. So she would have lined all of this, and I do think that then it would have become you can't leave me, because if you do. I'm going to tell the world that you, you know, not only have you left a black woman, but you've left me when I've lost your baby. And I do think that I, I genuinely do think it was something along those lines. If it's not, then a lot of people have said, could it be the connection to um, like, for example, people have spoken about yachting and stuff like that. Now, I've never I, I don't really speak about that because at the end of the day, I don't know enough about it. There's not evidence out there to know. But I do know that this is potentially something that she could have done. She could have evidence or say that she has. Now, obviously, there's also things that have come out that she was removed from the royal family for taking pictures. Yes, that is something, again, that could have been very possible. But we're talking about kind of the lead up to how she ensnared Harry. And I do think there is an element of this. Now, then we have the engagement interview. And there are so many things in that that create that was screaming to me that this is not genuine. This is not genuine. Um, and her behaviour before that, she was very much in a way door, sort of door. No, I was supposed to say door caught in the headlights. No, doe caught in the headlights. Um, and again, yes, you could argue the fact that she's very new. This could have been very um, worrying for her being new to the royal family. But again, you are not dealing with somebody that's just a normal person. You're dealing with a narcissist. A narcissist will always want to win. They will they will do whatever it takes to win. And so for her, also, they are deeply insecure, which is why they have to isolate their mark because they won't want to be uh, caught out. They won't they won't want anyone to see through their their disguise, so to speak. So in the beginning, she would have been a little bit insecure coming into this because she wouldn't kind of know what she was doing. However, she's also playing the game. So she would have met Harry. She would have very much acted as if she's this broken person that needs healing and fixing. She would have definitely trauma bonded with him by wearing Diana's perfume. And, it, and in Harry's mind, straight away, he's now rescuing his mother all over again. 
And that's pretty awful if you think about it. And now, regardless of what Harry's done since then, you know, we're talking about in the very beginning here. So she would have very much done that. And the, the psychological warfare that would have ensued with her wearing some of her, like say her perfume, she would have dressed a bit like her. So Harry would have immediately thought, she's 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 like my mother almost to the point where she could possibly he could possibly think that she's reincarnated from his mother um so she would have definitely set this up and she would so she would act that she like she needed rescuing which is why she's clingy with him in the beginning she's very much kind of like looking up at him as if you know oh you know you are you know you're like this this is my everything and he would have lapped this up this would have fed into um, his rescuer pers type personality uh, aspect to him. And so he would have done that. He And so, of course, when she then started saying, the paps are following me, I'm feeling scared, um, I'm feeling suicidal, and if we don't leave, I, f I fear for the baby, I fear for myself, straight away Harry's going to kick in and be like, you know what, I need to get, I need to get my wife out of here. Um, so she would have said all of these things. Now, a few people have said to me, how can she fake a pregnancy? Um, and like I said, and we'll go into this in great detail. It is easy to do that because Harry's not very bright. And you only have to have a couple of people around you that are willing to go along with the ruse. But also, she could also be somebody that says, I don't want you to see me naked. Um, I'm feeling a bit self-conscious. And you would respect that. So she possibly got changed in private. There was rumours in Australia that, that she had a private room to Harry. They did not sleep in the same room. There was even the question of, at one point he joked, is the baby mine? Now, so again, and you've got to remember that we're dealing with a narcissist here. So yes, is a narcissist capable of doing this and capable of keeping this ruse up? Absolutely. However, like I say, we will go into this more and when it comes to the royal family and their parts play in this, and I will talk about that. So what I then think started to happen is after the engagement interview, you then start to see the shift and the shift in dynamic. She started to act a little bit more confident. Now, this tells me that she's got something. She's secured him because an engagement isn't a definite albeit that okay it's public and it would look quite bad if the relationship ended but there are ways and means of making that happen the royal family have done it so you know there's ways and means of making a relationship kind of oh it's just it's just not worked out um but she felt secure so this tells me that she's done something said something that's created harry to think i can't leave her and there would have been moments within that relationship that he she would have been on form and he would have probably thought, you know what, actually, this could be OK. But then there'll be also moments when the other side of her would have kicked in and he would have thought, what have I done? I have made the most biggest mistake here. And it's that emotional roller coaster that is actually incredibly deeply draining and traumatizing when you are in a relationship with a narcissist, um, which is why if you haven't seen my video on why I don't believe they're together, that explains that so then you have all of this going on and then she starts to shift and that's when you start to see that she then starts to step in front of him she starts to then just tap him on the back um, and these are little cues and little signs just to say i'm here and he just dutifully steps back doesn't matter about royal protocol doesn't matter about the fact that he is supposed to go first that did not matter. So along this would would have been that she would not have liked the fact that she would have had to bow, bow to the two people, which would have been Catherine and William. Also as well along this, you then start to see that she would have been love bobbing the whole family, Charles, the Queen. And I think, what I think started to happen was the Queen started to see through her. I think Charles is a bit of a softy and I think he didn't want to probably see it. Um, she's an attractive young woman. I think that was an element of that. But I would have thought that Camilla would start to see through her. Um, that's why women like Meghan, they wouldn't have women as friends unless, they, unless they're beneath them. Unless they're women that are almost sycophantic, that, are, that kind of run around after them. Um, and kind of do what they say because as soon as a woman starts to question them as soon as a woman starts to kind of come up on a level 
or if a woman is above them, they will not like that. So she would definitely have not liked Catherine at all. So she would have wanted to infiltrate and come between Catherine and William. Now, I think, a lot, again, with the narcissist, is they, they think they are the most attractive person on the planet. So in her mind, she used Harry and then she would have made a beeline for William. And what she would have believed is that she could have been, she's attractive enough to infiltrate and get between William and Catherine. Probably what she did not bank on was how much William adores his wife. So this is around the time that I think the Rose, the Rosemary Hanbury um, affair started to circulate. And I believe that Meghan started this rumour. I think that because we know that she I believe she was the leak. I think she's always been the leak ever since the um, with the palace. Um, and I think that there were there weren't any leaks until she joined and I think that she was the one that, that created this story of the Rose Marie Ham brief affair, get the name right. And I think that was to come between William and Catherine. Um, and it didn't work. It didn't work. And and I think deep down they knew that. So I think this is when they would have started to really start to see Meghan for who she was. The bullying was starting to come out. Things were starting to be leaked in the press. So things were starting to happen and Megan would not have liked this. So what she would have done is she would have turned to the one person she can manipulate and that is Harry. So this is why I think that the suicidal thing come out. She needed an out, she need, she's always had it there. That's why she had a PR team there, she never let them go. She kept her clothing all the way over there in storage. She always had that as a plan, um, like half in, half out. And I think that's what she wanted. So this was when she started to kind of go, you know what? Um, this isn't working. I am not happy about this. So she would start to then put these little seeds of doubt in Harry's mind. Oh, the, the palace are talking about you. Um, this is, you know, these things are, you know, being said about you. Funny how the paper is is starting to kind of pick up on the conversations that we've we've had, Harry. That can only have come from William. That can only have come from your dad. But silly Harry probably didn't even think about the fact that it was his wife that was doing it. Um, so this is what I then think started to then happen. The, the palace started to really get wise to her. The, the media were picking up on it and it was starting to gain a bit of traction. Harry and Meghan wanted that shut down. And of course, the palace were not going to do that because this was the truth. And they're not going to kind of and they have a relationship with the press. So this would have upset Harry. This would have upset Meghan. And he and she, I believe, gave him a kind of ult ultimatum. So what I then think happened was around this time, I think the truth regarding A was happening because I've said before, I don't think that she was ever pregnant. And I think that Harry slept with somebody and got somebody pregnant because and the reason I think that because a few people have asked me, why do you think that? And, I, and I, again, I will go into more detail on this, but because why would the Queen not be OK with a surrogate? There are millions of people, famous celebrities that have surrogates. Why would they be not be OK with Harry and Meghan using a surrogate? And if this was, say, wh whose choice would this have been? So say, for example, Meghan went to Harry and said, I would like a child, but I can't have children. Do you honestly think the royal family are going to be like, sorry, no, we, we can't do that. We can't have a surrogate. Um, now, OK, yes, the argument could be that she wanted it in the line of succession. But I don't believe that. I do not believe that because with all of the, the ways and means they could have they could have tried maybe to, to, to get it done. So this you know maybe the child wouldn't have been in the line of succession but this would have been done in such a way because the royal family have a lot of influence they could have changed something within the letters patent in the royal family they could have put something through to say that if the child is a surrogate that has eggs from say Meghan or eggs from Harry that this child is also eligible to be a member of the royal family and part of the line of succession. You know, I don't know. I do not believe for one second that the Queen would have gone, you know what? No, we're going to go with the surrogate, but we're going to lie. 
I don't think this for one second. But what does seem plausible is that Harry got somebody pregnant and they had to rush this through. And of course, Meghan, not wanting to give up her meal ticket, was like, that's fine, I'll pretend to be pregnant. But that is where I believe the blackmail then comes in. I think she knows the truth about, this is why we got the flashes of the moon bump. That's why when she went to Canada, that she was kind of doing the pat walk with the fake baby. She knew, she knew. And she knew the royal family knew. And the royal family were basically watching this play out. She did that pap walk. She was grinning from ear to ear. She was not worried about press intrusion. She was not worried about anything. And doesn't it seem weird that, that she then sued for privacy of Archie? She's never done it since, but she did then. And the royal family okayed it. Why? Because they would have known the truth. Now, I don't think they knew in the beginning. I think something was happening. I think Harry did what he did. But I think then they needed... I'm sorry, but I, I'm probably going to get in serious trouble for this. But I think they covered it. And that is why I think when she wanted out, because the paps were talking about her and the media was bringing it out there, not the paps, the media was talking about it. The truth was starting to come out about... Um, about her behaviour and Harry's behaviour, she would have then, that's when they went to the Queen and said, okay, fine, we will leave. Um, however, we want the half in, half out. Now, okay, there are rumours that she was escorted out of the royal family. This still could have happened, and this is very possible that this was still around that time as well. So it could have been that she was trying to get as much evidence as possible because she knew she had to go. So she was also getting, um, like she was caught taking photographs of the royal children. And that is when they stopped giving her the chance to leave off her own accord. And they then said, you are leaving. So she left, went to Canada and Harry stayed behind to clear up all of the mess. And that is when we got the pap walk from her. The And that's when I think they said to Harry, you need to go to Canada and you need to, in a way, um, curb her, you know, kind of sort this out because we can't have that because all it takes is one person getting wind of this and this this could blow wide open. And so that's why I think then Harry is in a way has, has kind of got himself in bed with the devil, so to speak. I'm not saying that she's the actual devil, but you know what I mean. And he's got himself in a situation with somebody that he can't get himself out of. And so in a way, he's then decided. I've got to make the best of what I've got here. And so then he started to spend more time with her and mirror her behaviour. And now he's just as bad. So that's my thoughts on this. Um, it's difficult to fit this all in in a half hour video. And like I say, and I will do more on the children, but I genuinely believe that Megxit was not their idea. I think they were forced out. I think when they were forced out, they wanted the half in, half out. The Queen said no. You are, you know, you've got to leave. You've got to let all this calm down. Then you're going to come back. And I think they said no. Of course, what they didn't bank on was when they left in January 2020, what happened in March 2020? The worldwide bug. And I think that scuppered everything. That is what changed everything. And so since then, they have become so furious and so angry that what they wanted to happen, where they would have been invited with the elite, they would have been part of all of Hollywood and everything else, that is what I think that is what Megan truly wants. And it just got squashed because in that two years when everyone was fighting for their lives and everything was all up in the air and people were losing so much. These two clowns over there were just moaning and complaining about how bad their life is. But because no, nothing was open, they couldn't do anything. And so, of course, their behavior escalated. We saw more and more of how they behave. And of course, at that point, also then the trashing of Meghan's father happened. And I think this is when Hollywood said, hang on a minute, you know, this, you know, we've got a lot of respect for this guy and we're not having this. And so I think she was black. And of course, what they've done there is ultimately what narcissists do. They will blame someone. And so they blame, she blames the royal family 
for everything bad that's happened to her, she is blaming the royal family. And don't think for one second that when they divorce, Harry will be next in line. She will blame Harry. She will blame the family. And that is what will happen. Um, so like I say, this is just my thoughts and my opinions on this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you have something to add to this? Um, do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, I love reading your comments. Please keep it respectful because as much as I appreciate reading everything, I will remove anything that's attacking or mean-spirited because it's just there's just no need. We can be kind to each other even when we have a different opinion. Um, so thank you to everyone who has sat through this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I keep swiveling back on my chair. It's a habit. I'm going to really try to, to stop doing that. But it's almost like I'm I'm like a kid. It's like my inner child is kicking in and I just I, I just want to spin round and go wee. <laughs> but I'm resisting the urge to do that. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much. If you really enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing to the channel. Um, if you would like to say thank you and you want to tip me in a way, you can um, you can buy me a cup of coffee, which the link is in the description box of the video. But you can also go just above the subscribe button and there is a little button there, which is the coffee, uh, the Instagram and the Patreon, I believe. And you can click on those. and It takes you straight there. Um, you can I have a P.O. box for anyone that would like to send me something. Please think about doing that if you haven't already, especially if it's something um, to do with uh, you have a little business and you want it to be promoted or something. Anything that I can do to help you. I'm happy to do that. Um, what else? I'm on Instagram. I'm I was on TikTok. But I've been removed. <laughs> um, I'm on Rumble. Um, you can become a member, a Patreon, um, and I will be doing a live this week. I've just got to sort out the day when I'm going to do it. Um, so for those of you who have asked. So, yeah. So thank you so much. As always, I, I really do um, you know, get such a great joy from, excuse me, or hiccups doing this channel. Um, but as always, um, have a great week and I will see you in the next video. And I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Mwah. Bye, bubble family.